damn it. Would you pay $350 for a pair of work pants? No? Well, I'll bet you change your mind by the end of this video. Hello and welcome, I'm Carl Murawski, and this is the channel that helps you own less and own better. Now, a little while ago, I did a video called 11 American-Made Workwear Companies, or something like that. And in that video, I mentioned a company called Grease Point Workwear. They were the first one that I really wanted to check out. Now, they're made individually by hand by, I think, a, a group of, you know, a few people now. It used to be just one guy. And I've heard from plenty of people that they are some of the best work gear out there. Mostly they focus on pants and shirts, and I think they have maybe a jacket or a vest thrown in there occasionally, but really some pretty impressive stuff. And even in the summertime, they've made some work shorts. So I got myself a pair, and I really want to show them to you today. Digging into the construction a bit more, aside from the denim itself, you'll find wall-to-wall -wall American components and labor. Raw copper rivets and buttons from YKK in Kentucky. Tex 80 indigo dyed thread from a and &E out of North Carolina. Domestically sourced vegetable tanned leather patch and surprisingly duck canvas pocket bags which come from Texas. The denim itself is available in either 14 or 16 ounce selvage and is sanferized with a starchy feel until you begin to break them in. The fit is a classic relaxed taper with leg openings wide enough to play nicely with work boots. Felled, triple stitch seams throughout and they're clean finished on the inside for comfort. The belt loops are double thick, and the fly is one piece, which is a new one to me, and I'm not sure if there's actually any benefit to this or if it's just a design choice. Okay, so that's all the technical stuff out of the way, but it's the unique touches which make this pair of work pants so special. I'll start with my favorite, the front pockets. This isn't a new design, but it's one I wish that all my jeans had. When you put your hands into your front pockets with normal jeans, the edge of the pocket can kind of like cut into your hand, by creating this gentle curve, there's less tension on the edge, which makes using your front pockets much easier. It may sound a little strange, but you don't know what you're missing until you've tried these. Speaking of pockets, you may have noticed that fifth pocket, which is actually usable. By rotating the pocket 45 degrees or so, the opening is much more readily accessible. I like to keep my Victorinox Cadet in this pocket, and it's a good example of how Grease Point Workwear make their products with function and usability in mind. The last pocket I'd like to draw your attention to is the knife pocket on the lower leg. Thought you needed carpenter jeans to get a handy leg pocket? Think again. When you order a pair from Grease Point, you'll be asked to specify whether you'd like a knife pocket on the left side or right side or not at all. Though, why you wouldn't want this handy pocket is beyond me. Inside these pockets, you'll find an unusual material, duck canvas. On most workwear, you'll find a lightweight cotton pocket bag one which usually doesn't seem to match the durability of the rest of the garment, but on these Grease Point work jeans, the 12 ounce duck canvas allow you to put tools inside of them, now I usually carry my lineman pliers in my right back pocket, and not worry about them poking through the bottom. The double front design is a tried and true work pants staple, allowing you to get double the life out of your pants by doubling up the material in the spot which typically sees the most abuse. These are full coverage chap style double fronts with rivets at the stress points, but I want to draw your attention to one area in particular. Take a look at the gentle curve which connects the Y and X axis. This is an example of the artistic eye that went into creating these work jeans, and it lends a sense of beauty to an otherwise utilitarian design. The rivets you see here and all around the jeans were selected because of their smooth top. This is important when you're working around finished surfaces as typical rivets have a pronounced shank which can easily scratch and mar. Leaning against your fender as you work on your truck can produce some pretty nasty looking scratches that even aggressive rubbing compound can't remove. Now I've been able to use these work jeans for about two months now and I've gotten to know them a little bit better since I shot this b-roll footage. The most noticeable thing is the weight and rigidity of double layered 16 ounce denim. With essentially 32 ounces of denim running the length of your leg, these take some getting used to. Just for a point of reference, the Carhartt B01 pants are made from 12 ounce firm duck with a double front. A total of 24 ounces compared to 32 ounces. This is like wearing a lightweight pair of jeans, like eight ounces or so, beneath the B01s. So if you're used to workwear, this won't likely bother you, but if you're wearing them casually and just like the look of double fronts, I'd say go with the 14 ounce. When you actually put these things to work, the grease points, they, they perform as you'd expect, tough and rugged with some nice conveniences, like that little knife pocket, which make life just a little bit easier. 
I noticed that they took about a day to begin conforming to my body with a bit of stretching at the waist, increasing at the back of the knee and hips. After a week, they fit like a glove and wearing them all day now is a pleasure. The front pockets have spoiled all other pants for me and the overall craftsmanship is something I admire whenever I can. These remind me of buying my first Nipex pliers. Expensive, but a joy to use every time you do. Now I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that you have to get a pair of $350 work pants because they're superior to everything else out there. The fact of the matter is, I was a guy who got my first work gear from the Salvation Army. You know, I, I really came from, from a very, you know, kind of a struggling household, didn't have a whole lot of cash to spend. That was the best place to get stuff that I could actually work in, and that's what I did. You could get three pairs of Carhartt BL1s for the price of these, or two pairs of 1620 pants for the price of these. But these are definitely not for the entry level. These instead, I think, are an interesting crossover of the denim world and of workwear. So if you're somebody who's established in your career and you're looking for something that's just a step above, you know, you want that customization. You want something that blends the, the passion that you have for finely made goods or maybe denim, you know, the denim head community with your job. That's who these are for. So I am fortunate enough to have been one of the only people that Carhartt let into their Kentucky factory to see how the BO1 pants are made. They're still being made here in the US. And the production line is, is pretty amazing. I think one new pair comes off the line every 45 seconds. And these things, they're put together in teams. There's teams of people who do all the work and they kind of compete against each other. It's kind of interesting. And they just keep pumping these things out like crazy. You know what I mean? Because there's such a demand for them. Conversely, you have a company like Grease Point Workwear, where it's a small group who take your order, who you know and they know your name, most likely your name is on the work order that they are actually creating, and then they go ahead and try to make the best garment they possibly can, paying close attention to each stitch which is laid down by hand for your particular pair of pants. This may seem like a lot of work and detail that goes into something that you're really gonna thrash on. Because let's face it, work wear deserves to be beat, right? That's what you're supposed to do with it, is wear it to work. And you shouldn't really shy away from actually using these things. So if you do bear it by a pair, put them to work. That's what they were born for. But there's just a big difference between the world of the BO1 Carhartt made in an assembly line, 45 seconds every time, you know, off the assembly line and then a small group of people who are painstakingly making the best pair that they possibly can. And I think that appeals to two different people, and that's where the price difference comes in. It's the difference between a handmade Bentley, you know, and a Honda Accord. For most people, the Honda Accord's gonna be the way to go. But for a smaller group of people, the Bentley will be. And, and thank God, because honestly, these small factories, these small shops, they can't handle the volume of a large factory. So. Anyway, it's my long-winded way of saying, these aren't for everybody, guaranteed. And I know some of you in the comments are gonna say stuff like, come on, no working man can afford these. I hate to tell you, I'm a working man. I can afford these, and you probably can too. Do you need to? Do you want to? Totally up to you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd wanna see more video on denim, I have made you a whole playlist right here. That's every video that I've ever done on denim. Everything from a Selvage 101 video, which has been pretty popular and people tend to like, to my most recent video. I mean, I try to cover everything I can in here. And uh, there's even some denim sneakers, all kinds of stuff on denim. So if you're a denim head, go in there. Let me know what I got wrong, please. And uh, I'd love you for it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.